pretty difficult to prove the value of your PPC campaigns if you're not tracking your performance. And one of the easiest ways to track that performance in Google Ads and Microsoft Ads is with auto-tagging. This video will show you the benefits and why you may want to set up auto-tagging. We'll learn some of the subtle differences between Google's version and Microsoft's version, and probably the most important part, where the auto-tagging setting lives in each of the platforms. The first thing I want to discuss is why auto-tagging is important. And I have no problem admitting that not everyone uses it, and you don't have to. But here are the main benefits of why you should consider it. The first is that it's the easiest way to start tracking conversions in the Google and Microsoft platforms. Manually tagging your URLs can be time consuming. The larger the account, the longer it's going to take. So typically we will start everything with auto tagging and then make any other tracking changes necessary if the client requests that they want anything more specific. Next, auto tagging can help keep the dimensions consistent in both Google and Microsoft. Let me give you a few examples. And really soon, I'm going to show you what dimensions Google and Microsoft tracks with auto tagging. But one of those dimensions that both of them can track is the medium. By default, both of them are going to use CPC as the medium. But being in a bunch of accounts over the past decade, I've seen people use the medium as CPC, PPC, paid ads, and a variety of others. That'll show up as different rows within your reporting, even though it could be all within the same campaign. If you're manually tagging certain URLs and it doesn't match what auto tagging can do, it can just make things messy. Besides just totally different naming conventions, even something as simple as capitalizing a letter versus not capitalizing a letter will be split within your reporting. You need to be that exact. So letting the channels add the tracking for you can help keep your data clean when reviewing the performance within analytics. The third reason why auto tagging is important is that if you prefer to import Google Analytics conversions into Google Ads, you must have auto tagging enabled. Now the fourth reason I know for sure for Google, honestly not sure for Microsoft, is that if you want to start using offline conversion tracking, you also need auto tagging to be enabled. And the last benefit I just have listed on this slide is that you get additional reporting in Google. And when we review the dimension options for each of the channels, you're going to see what that additional reporting is. But now let's go through how auto tagging works. Each of the platforms use specific click IDs. We see on the slide here, Google uses their Google click identifier, commonly called GCLID, and Microsoft uses the Microsoft click ID. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce how to say the acronym for that. Is it muscle kid? Whatever, Microsoft click ID, we'll just go with that. And to continue explaining how these are added to your URLs when a user clicks on your ads, let's go to the search engines and see some examples. So I have Google open in one tab, I have Bing open in another tab, and I'm not gonna try to find the same ad from the same company, it doesn't matter. I'm just looking for the click IDs in both of the channels. So let me head over to the search bar and paste in a query. All right, let's see the results. I'm gonna click on the local guy to see what we get. And here's one example of seeing a click ID within the URL. Sorry, it might be a little bit hard to see. I have it highlighted so you know at least where to look, but after the main domain, we see the question mark and then GCLID equals and then long list of characters. If for whatever reason, if you already use a question mark in your final URL, the click ID will be after an ampersand or the and symbol, if you're used to saying it that way. Another reason why this URL is a great example, I'm gonna highlight a little bit of this URL first. This website uses page anchors. So pretty much if I click on another section of this website, the URL doesn't change, it adds a different anchor. So let me highlight the new one. I was on services, now I click the about, now it says about. So there's gonna be that pound symbol that's part of the URL because they don't have separate pages for each of these sections. Your click ID will always be in front of page anchors. Didn't think I was gonna find one of these, but I did. So those rules about the question mark, ampersand, and being in front of the page anchors, that also applies to how it works within Microsoft Ads. All right, let's head to bing.com. Paste it in the same query. Let's see the results. You can see the little ad tag right at the beginning of the description for each of these examples. So there are five ads at the top of this Microsoft Bing search results. Let me just click on one. Uh, this final URL is a little bit different. There's a lot going on in it. We see over here, I'm going to just highlight part of it. They already have the question mark within the URL. So then the Microsoft click ID, which is over here at the very end, is behind the ampersand that I mentioned when we were on the Google part. Again, gonna repeat it, the question mark, page anchors, those rules are the same for both channels. 
Now with Microsoft, we know you need to have the universal event tag firing off to do conversion tracking as well as any particular events fired. So the Microsoft Click ID will be included in any of those universal event tag events. Because in Microsoft's conversion tracking, you can do page visit conversions is one of them, so as event-based conversions. And we do have a different video about Microsoft event tracking conversions. You can watch that one here. Now I want to cover just a few examples of when auto-taking could potentially not work within your account. The first reason is that if your final URL has an automatic redirect, let's say you use the main website for your final URL. Maybe it went through a redesign, URLs changed, redirects were put in place, but you didn't update the URL within your ad. If that URL redirects, Google or Microsoft will not carry on the tracking that we set up with auto-tagging to the new URL. That has to be done on your end, the advertiser's end. The easy solution would be just make sure that your URLs don't redirect. For whatever reason, if it's out of your control, it's purposely set up for some different internal tracking methods, then you're gonna have to work with your developer or whoever manages your website to set up a way where the tracking information is carried over to the new URL. I'll admit, I don't know how to do that. And every time we've run into that situation, we've had to work with a developer. Now let's say you are working with that developer and they are carrying the click IDs to the redirect. That information needs to stay exactly the same. The lowercase letters need to stay lowercase. Uppercase letters need to stay uppercase. Now in this particular reason, the source and medium, for example, Google and CPC, that information will still go through. But any of the click specific data, campaign, ad group, keyword, ad content, whatever, that's gonna show as not set if the click ID information does not match between your original URL and the new URL that had the rewrite. And one more example is that if your content lives within an iframe, any of the tracking code that lives within an iframe cannot see auto-tagging information. It's a rare occasion, but I have seen it a couple times. There are many more ways why auto-tagging may not work for you. These just happen to be the three that I've run into the most. Now I want to show you what information is going to be captured in auto-tagging for both Google and Microsoft. And to do this, I'm going to visit each of the channel's specific support pages on this topic. As you kind of mentioned early on in the video, if you don't want to use Google CPC for your source medium, you need it to be something else, that's when manual tagging is going to be better for you. Now beyond just those main five parameters, Google gives you better reporting if you use auto-tagging. Here I jump to a different page so you can see the URL change if you want to find this article too. It says manual tagging will only provide data for the five dimensions we just talked about. But with auto tagging, we get data for many more dimensions. We see match type, ad group, final URL, ad format, ad distribution network, placement domain, customer ID, and then better breakdowns like hour of the day, placement, display targeting, and your video and shopping campaigns. And the final note at the bottom, if any new reporting features become available in the future, it's only going to be available if you are using auto tagging. So that's another option to consider between auto and manual tagging. Now if we go to Microsoft, Microsoft will only add the five main UTM tags when you have auto tagging set up there. So for Microsoft, your auto tag source will always be Bing, your medium will always be CPC, it'll pull in the campaign name, your content will be the ad group the keyword came from, and then the term is going to be the keyword, not the search query, the keyword. Or if it's for shopping, it'll be the product group. So for these main five, it's pretty similar to Google. It's just you don't get any of the additional information within Google Analytics. It's just the best they can do. So now let's hop into the ad platforms for both Google and Microsoft so we can show you where to find auto-tagging. Auto-tagging for Google is an account level setting. So I like to make sure I'm on all campaigns. Then we can go down and click settings. And there's our account settings. You just got to go down a little bit and there we see auto tagging. And then you just have to go and check that box. And of course, always remember to click save. Otherwise it won't be completed. In any new account, this box is not going to be checked. Manual tagging is the default option. We just already have that done in this particular account. So that's Google. Let me head into Microsoft. Okay. We're in Microsoft. Ignore the red bar. This is just our demo account. You want to go to tools and under setup, click preferences. I already scrolled down a little bit to get to account information, bunch of other settings that you can change. Had to blur so much information out, but there we see auto tagging. So this is for a new client we just had. So I need to go and edit account settings, scroll down, and then I want to add UTM tags to my destination URLs. And then you can click save. Now for the last thing I'm going to talk about, I do want to hop back into Google ads. Now there are a couple ways that you can change the URLs for specific areas. 
See, I'm looking at a specific keyword. You do have the option to add keyword level URLs and the keyword level URLs would override your ad URLs. We've worked on accounts where the mobile URL is tracked differently or the site link extensions are tracked differently with different parameters. I'm not going to get into the debate of which one you should do. They all have their reasons for each of these accounts of why it was done. So that doesn't matter. But let's say you wanted your manual tags in Google to override any of the auto taggings, whether it's just a particular portion of the account, it's just a one time campaign, whatever the reason may be. In order to do this, you actually have to click an additional setting within Google Analytics. So within Google Analytics, go to admin and then go to your property settings. And under advanced settings, we see this box. Allow manual tagging to override auto tagging for Google Ads and Search Ads 360. You will have to go down and click save. I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave auto tagging on in our account. But if you do choose to do this and save it, there are a few things you should probably know. Any manual tags that override auto tags are not included in your multi-channel funnels or the multi-channel funnel attribution report. If you're doing manual tagging after a campaign has already been running on auto tagging, there will be multiple entries showing up in the same campaign within Google Analytics. This is mainly from the campaign name level. Analytics records the information at the moment of a Google Ads click. So if you're not making sure that the information is exactly the same, be ready for some muddy reports and you must include UTM source in your manual override. If you don't include at least the source, all your manual UTMs will be ignored and auto tagging will be applied. So that's a high level view of auto tagging in Google and Microsoft. I know there's a lot more I could probably cover, get a little bit more specific, but maybe we can do that in another video. If you're interested in other Google videos about parameter tracking, you can first check out this one about custom parameters in Google ads. And then Michelle made a second one about Google Ads value track parameters, and you can watch that one here. We know some of this stuff can be confusing. And again, I didn't get to probably everything I could have covered in this video. So if you have any additional questions about auto tagging in either Google or Microsoft, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.